Hi everyone and welcome to Sparkles, the show where we prove that crafting is messy by making a mess. So I wanted to take you through the kit cards that came in the Annie's crafting kit. They're Shaker Happy Birthday cards. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to test was what really do you need? Um, Cause this kit doesn't come with everything. Um, so how many ingredients do you really need to add to get to a working kit is my question. So we're going to test that. Uh, this is the first sample card. It's called Big Birthday Wishes. And I have pre-cut some of the pieces. Um, it does ask you to cut them. In this case, it asks you to cut this piece of paper by four by five and a quarter inches. I have used a paper trimmer because I can't use a ruler, pencil, and scissors to cut a straight line if it would save my life. However, if you are one of those lucky people who can do that and do have that skill, then theoretically you would need um, a ruler, a pencil, or marking device, and a pair of scissors, and some glue. I want to see if that would be the minimum you would need to get through this kit. Um, so I've used a paper trimmer, but you could also use ruler, pencil, and scissors. Uh, with the paper trimmer, I'm also using scissors and just liquid glue. I want to see really, like, do you need specialty adhesives and how does this work? Now, the cards have you build everything one way. I'm not going to follow that way because I found a way that works easier for me. Whether or not that works easier for you, that's going to be up to you. So the first thing I want you to do is take this background piece of word paper and center it on there. Now they would have you center this and build it up, but I found that that didn't work so well for me because I had trouble with the sequence. So what I'm going to do is take my glue and glue my acetate on. Now this would be a great place for some, um, like a tape runner or adhesive strips, double-sided adhesive. That would be really nice here. And the acetate did come with a uh, preservative layer, but that's already been peeled off the covering. So I put this on this way. And then they've got these strips here. And again, you can choose the way that works best for you. But I am just going to start here. And I just like to turn a corner with my strips. I find that works fine for me. You can cut them and glue them to length if you so desire. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that they're kind of centered so they're well hidden by the background there. So I'm going to come with this one. And I'm just going to use a little piece here that I have for the last little bit. Grab my scissors. Cut that into a fit. And now that I have a decent enclosure there, this one uses the Sparkle Stars sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a generous pinch. And so I've actually already made one set of these cards just to practice. So I've already made quite a few cards with this. And these sequins are lasting. There are lots. You can afford to be generous with them. Then what I do is I peel off all this backing. And 
no fancy tools today. I wanted to see literally, is this a kit that you could do as a beginner? Because that's one of my questions. Is I feel like kit of the month clubs should be something that you can do as a beginner. Where you can start fresh out of the box and not need equipment or supplies. And if you do need equipment or supplies to start fresh out of the box, I think that should be listed on the kit club itself. So that you know that to join this kit, you are going to need, you know, this this list of materials before the first one comes and decide from that if it's worth it for you to invest or not. That's my opinion. You may feel differently. So let me just take this little shaker bit, line it up so it's centered, and let the wet glue dry. That makes the very first card. So tell me, what do you think? Should Kit of the Month clubs be inclusive, or do you mind adding some of your own supplies at home, and how many? Thank you, and have a good day.